are a royal child and they put you in the lowest slum area of your country, you are still a royal child in the slum. Now you've turned the slum into a royal slum? Absolutely. In other words, where you are doesn't change who you are. Say it loud. Where I am doesn't change who I am. You must know your value. Because when you know your value, your confidence is, I don't need a Mercedes to be important anymore. When I drive Toyota, to, to, Toyota becomes a royal Toyota because I'm driving it. It doesn't make me valuable. I make it valuable. Tell the chair, you're lucky I'm sitting in you today. You got to know your value. I say you got to know your value. The job that you're on right now may not be the job you're dreaming of. That's not the job God showed you. But that's on the way there. So the value is not in the job. It's in you who hold the job. And you should say to your colleagues every day to work, you are so blessed that I'm working with you all for this short time. I give value to this company, value to this organization. I bring value to this department. And when you know your value, you don't need to be approved by other people to feel important. You hear me? You don't need no one to tell you you are valuable if you know you're valuable. Confidence comes from personal revelation of your value. Number six, very important, to be confident, you must have knowledge of your ability. You must know that you are your own raw material. Boy, that's a big statement. Please, please get this tape. If you listen to this tape seven times, you're going to have yourself a shouting experience. I'm going to say this again. You must have knowledge of your ability. I can't explain this enough. What makes me so confident? You know, I stand before 100,000 people one time. And man, it didn't bother me one bit. Why? I knew, I didn't know the people, I knew myself. No, no, no I'm trying to explain. It doesn't matter how big the crowd gets, it's what you know about yourself. A lady called me up the other day, she says, I saw you on TBN, and you stood there without notes, and you were sitting. She said, how do you do that? I said, I know my stuff. <laughs> when I was, in, in, I was in Bermuda a few weeks ago, and uh, they were using my computer, you know, with PowerPoint, and the tech guys took it up upstairs in the tech room, and they were trying to fix my computer for me to use it, and they messed it up, something they did, and the thing wouldn't work. So the fellow, the fellow came back real nervous. He said, Dr. Monroe, I'm so sorry, but we can't, we can't get this. You know, oh, we're so sorry. And the place is packed and people are waiting. I'm sorry. He says, uh, how are you going to teach? I smiled. I said, sir, let me tell you something. That computer has a hard drive and I am the hard drive. <laughs> oh, come on, shout a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah. This stuff is downloaded in me, and I transferred it to the computer. If the computer shuts down, I got the original stuff. I don't need no computer. Is anybody with me? Everybody said, know your ability. You got to know. When they give you an assignment on your job or give you a tough assignment, just smile and say, I could do this. You are your own raw material. You came to earth packaged. You ought to clap right there. I tell you, I, Holy Ghost say, you ought to get that piece there. You came to earth how? Packaged. You came to earth how? Packaged. Put the D on there. You came to earth how? Packaged. You came with everything you need for the rest of your life. Problem is, you got to know that. You got to know that. If you know your ability, then people cannot judge you anymore. They can't tell you what you cannot do and what you cannot do and what you can't. See, it's over when you know your ability. Tell your neighbor, I'm good at what I do. I'm the best at what I do. I'm the best at what I was born to do. 
Now say it loud like you believe it. I am the best at what I was born to do. Praise God. I'm the best at it. That's why the birds laugh at you every day when they fly. That's why they sing over you. They sing. Do this if you can. Do this if you can. Nah, 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 nah. They laugh. What? They say, listen, we're the best at what we do. God gave them what? The ability to fly. He's done the same thing for you. Number seven, very important. To be confident, you must know your uniqueness. Knowledge of your uniqueness separates you from everybody else. Oh, this is so important. Confidence comes when you know that no one could take your place. No one could really represent you. You are an original specimen and there ain't nobody like you. That makes you confident. I'm talking to myself all by myself. Ah, see, when I walk into a place, I don't care who's there. I don't care how famous they think they are. They ain't never seen this before. Oh, I'm talking to myself. When I walk in the hay, the original has just arrived. Praise God. You got to feel that way about yourself. Tell your neighbor, you don't know who you're sitting next to. Shake my hand right now. Come on, shake the hand. Praise God. You are unique. So unique. That's why you should never expect Pastor Richard to be like me. Come on, praise the Lord. And let me tell you what's dumb. Here's what's dumb. What's dumb is to try and imitate people. You can always tell when you have discovered yourself. Everybody tries to imitate you. Because you only imitate an original. Clap your hands right here. Praise God. It's the will of God. You are unique and special to God. Ain't nobody like you. Come on, shake yourself. Tell your neighbor, this is the original. 6.7 billion people and ain't nobody got your fingerprint. You ought to praise him just a couple more seconds. You are original, Christine. Ain't nobody like you. Praise God. That's why when folks refuse you, you should tell them, you don't know what you missing. Come on, somebody. Ah! You need to go tell them folks who say, they, you know, I'm married. You tell them, now, let me tell you something. Let's start off right here. You are married this? Let me tell you right up front. You ain't never going to find this anywhere else in the world. Come on, praise the Lord. Orig- Amen, brother. Original. <laughs> Woo! You see that suit he got on? Original. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord. Amen, brother. He knows what I'm talking about. You have to know that you are unique to have confidence. And if you want to wear mustard, you wear it. And you walk big. This is my suit. I won't wear this. Everybody say confidence is uniqueness. You need to know it. The most important word on this list is the word what? Knowledge. You got to know it. Otherwise, you become a victim of other people's opinions. They make you wear what they wear. Fix your hair like they're here. Make you talk like them. Make you drive what they drive. But when you are unique, you wear what you want to wear. Fix your hair the way you want to fix it. And you ride a bicycle and be happy. Because you don't want no one's opinion. I'm going to praise God all by myself. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it's a privilege to sit next to me. Unique. Number eight, write it down. To be confident in your future. You must have the knowledge of your predestination. Very important. You got to know that your destination is already finished. See, when you know that it's already done, then your confidence is strong 
Because you know that whatever you're going through is only temporary. You got to know that your future is God's past. You're not going to an experiment. You are going to a history. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Let me tell you a verse that you read many times, but you're going to finally understand it. Jesus was talking with his disciples one day, and he said this strange thing. He said, this command have I received from my father. He said, that if I lay my life down, I will pick it up again. Therefore, I tell you these things so that you will not be offended in me. Let me explain. That's a deep statement. He said, look, I'm going to be killed. I told you all those things. They're going to, you know, pluck out my beard. They're going to whip me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to, you know, do this stuff to me. They're going to bury me. And you are depressed. He said, look, don't be depressed. He said, look, I already got a word from my father before I came here. And the word was, if I come to earth, lay my life down, go to the grave, I will take it up again. That's a guaranteed promise before I came. I got the result before I started the process, he said. Oh, you ain't got this. No, you ain't got it. He said, look, I received a command from my father. I already got my predestination before I came. I'm already raised from the dead. He says, so dying is easy. Going to hell is easy. Going to the grave. Why? I already got the result before I started the process. That's called predestination. In other words, when he went before the trial, he was quiet because he was confident. You can be quiet when you are confident. Oh, you don't understand. See, sometimes you're making noise because you're scared. I'll I, I finish, but I, I guess I'm, you know, you little, little ruffling up on your job, people track you. All of a sudden, you say, right, now you know. No, no, no. If you know, <laughs> first of all, this job ain't what God showed you, so you know you're only there for a short time. Number two, promotion doesn't come from the left nor the right, so you know they can't promote you nor demote you. And number three, you know you're worth more than they paying you. So, what you making noise for? Your confidence is in your predestination. I don't know what you're going through in your life, in your business, on your job. But I tell you from the word of God, it's already done. What you were born to do is already done. And therefore you can have quiet confidence in the midst of tribulation. Because it cannot last. It cannot last. For the joy that was set before him, it says, he could endure the cross and the shame and the despising of men. Because he already saw the joy that was set before. Your predestination. Your future is already set. So walk into this year with confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, that means that the economy has no effect on you. Oh, Lord, help me to preach a little bit. I don't care what they predict. Predictions don't affect the saint. Are you with me? I ain't joking, you know. I'm serious about this. This ain't no message. This is a word from God. He says, no good thing will I withhold from my folks who walk uprightly. He says that everything will work for your good. In other words, no prediction can stop your future. It's already set. If they close your company down this year, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Because you're on your way to the best thing God ever had for you. God don't get worse, he gets better. God don't get low, he gets higher. God don't get less, he gets more. You're on your way to much more in 2004. He doesn't get less. Number nine, write this down. To be confident, you must have knowledge of your protection. You got to know 
that you are under divine edict and divine protection because it is God's best interest for you to succeed. The Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says, I will keep that which concerns you. That means whatever is your concern, he will protect it. Have confidence in his protection. He protect you from economic turn down. Some of your businesses, you think that your business is normal. I want you today to understand that if you are in the kingdom of God, you don't have a normal business. See, sometimes you go to these meetings and they talk in worldly information. You know, uh, uh, you know, insurance rates going up, you know, housing, you know, this and that, real estate is down, and, da, da, da. and you listen to those meetings, you get the wrong yeast in your dough. <laughs> but have you ever read, have you not heard, that in the middle of Egypt, when there was a famine, it says in the houses of Israel, there was no famine, nor was there any hunger, but there was too much in the middle of a farming. Yes, sir. That means the house next door was broke, and the house in, that you was in was full of stuff, because God will protect you right in the middle of chaos. Yes. It will happen to you in Jesus' name. He protects. It's my confidence. I say he protects. I want you to say this. I want you to understand this, okay? This is, this is right from the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. I hear you, Lord. The Lord says, no matter how difficult it seems right now to what you've been going through for the last couple of years and even now, he said, I'm going to tell you now that that cannot last because that is not his last word to you. I'm talking to somebody. Listen to him. He says, the reason why it's taken long is not because I am holding it back from you, but because I am preparing you for it. Yeah. Oh, you ought to praise him all by yourself. Ah! Kadaburaba Satak. 